just uh, uh, second uh, speaker. I will introduce first uh, Mrs. Deepali Veer. Uh, Madam, uh, heartily welcome to this webinar. So, uh, Mrs. Deepali Veer is MSc degree entomology. Uh, uh, qualification of the working in the uh, bio plants private limited uh, it may be one among the important uh, public sector sorry uh, private sector which is like uh, almost all exotic plant uh, commercial flowers and uh, she is having 11 years of experience in floriculture and uh, he, she is guiding uh, farmers especially on production and production of uh, flower crops especially planting fertigation uh, plant production. Basically, she is an entomologist. So, she is gu guiding the farm community uh, with respect to cultivation aspects of uh, cut flowers. And she is also conducting uh, multi location trials of their new varieties. And uh, she is conducting regular training uh, to the farming community on floriculture. So, we have a very uh, resourceful person, uh, Dr. Deepali Vikram Veer. So, I request uh, uh, Dr. Deepali Vikram Veer to uh, share her experience uh, with respect to protected cultivation of uh, flowers. So, please, madam. Yes. Madam, you can share your slide. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I welcome all of you uh, in this two days webinar on floriculture and uh, landscaping. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yeah, madam, you are ready. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. First, uh, on behalf of the KFR Plant Company, uh, I would like to thank uh, Gulkarni, sir, and whole the organization committee of this webinar uh, for giving us chance uh, to be a part of this floriculture seminar. Uh, in this uh, session, we will uh, cover the advances in the protected cultivation. So, in, uh, so in uh, today's presentation, we will cover the following topics. First about the protected cultivation concept, gerbera and dendrobium cultivation aspects and about the care by plants company. So first we will start with the uh, protected cultivation. So what is the protected cultivation? Actually, this is the process of the growing the crops in a controlled environment. So to control the environment, different cl climatic factors like the temperature, light intensity, uh, then humidity, these are regulated as per the requirement of the crop. There are the various types of the protected cultivation. Uh, it's depending on the structure or the material used to protect the crops. For example, the net houses, shed net houses, then uh, poly houses, glass houses, etc. So, as per the region, climate, and the requirement of the crop, farmers adopt different protected cultivation technologies. Uh, amongst these uh, protected cultivation technologies, greenhouses are commercially used for the cultivation of the cut flowers, exotic vegetables and the fruits. So what is greenhouse? Actually, greenhouse is the uh, structure which is covered with the transparent material in which the crops are grown in controlled environmental conditions. There are the different types of the greenhouses uh, depending on the climate control. Naturally ventilated greenhouses, fan pad system greenhouses and fan pad with the automization. These are the three types of the greenhouses based on the climate control. So in naturally ventilated greenhouses, the uh, main principle is that the heat inside the heat inside the greenhouse, it is escaped through the top vents due to the pressure gradient created the uh, cycle patterns all on all the four sides so the ventilation and the temperature is maintained naturally through these uh, naturally greenhouses then second type is the fan pad system greenhouses and in this fan pad system greenhouses uh, there are the water pads on one side of the greenhouses through these water pads the cool air outside cool air that comes through these water pads 
these water pads are used to control the humidity inside the greenhouses then on the other side there are the exhaust fans these fans are used to control the temperature inside the greenhouses and to control the light intensity there are the aluminum screens or you can say energy screens which control the light intensity inside the greenhouses and third type is the fan pad with automation in this type all the system they have the sensors all the as per the requirement of the crop these all the temperature light intensity humidity these are maintained inside the greenhouses so if we compare these greenhouses as per the cost these fan pad and fan pad system with atomized greenhouses these are more costly than the naturally ventilated around 2.5 times more costly and these uh, greenhouses fan pad and atomized greenhouses they are mainly used for the commercial hardening units or to develop the new varieties for research so normally farmers all over india are, are cultivating the crops in the naturally ventilated greenhouses then what are the advantages why we should go for the crop cultivation or for the greenhouses what are the advantages of the greenhouses first advantage is to provide the better environment for the crop in greenhouses we can protect the crop from the different abiotic and the biotic factors different abiotic factors like the temperature light intensity frost rain these we can control easily in the greenhouses while the biotic factors like the pest and diseases these also we can uh, control in the greenhouses then second is the maximum utilization of the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is uh, trapped inside the greenhouses and it can be utilized effectively by the crops in the uh, protected cultivation then effective resource management like the media we can use different media like the uh, apart from soil coco peat hydroponics we can use this resource effectively water then fertilizers pesticides labor so all these resources can be managed effectively in the greenhouses then the main point is year round cultivation irrespective of the season or any climatic adversities we can grow the crop throughout the year in the greenhouses and the main is the high production with the quality of the uh, uh, crop so these are the main uh, advantages for the cultivation in the greenhouses greenhouses So we can manage our bare arnes. Our kids, we can grow the dendrobium, philanopsis. Then these are some filler crops like gypsophila and limonium. Uh, these crops are mainly used in the bouquets as a filler with the different uh, flowers. So these are also day by day. Uh, these are grown in the greenhouses and it has best demand in the market. Apart from these uh, cut flowers, different types of the vegetables like uh, red uh, capsicum, cucumber, cherry tomatoes, or fruits like strawberries that can also be grown successfully in the protected cultivation. So first we start with the jarbera cultivation. Uh, jarbera belongs to the family Compositae, which is the major flowering uh, family. Uh, there are two types of the jarbera: standard jarberas and the pot jarberas. Standard jarberas are the jarberas which are which which are used for the cut flowers, and uh, second is the pot varieties, pot jarberas. So now, day by day, uh, this pot section, pot varieties are gaining much importance in the market due to this. Uh, you can say the corona situation or this pandemic. Many why why what are the basic reasons that this pot uh, jarberas are giving getting the more potential in the market? Because in this pandemic situations, most of the people are working from the home. So to these pot plants help to create the. Uh, great ambience inside the room or in the offices so these pot plants are getting much more demand in current situation then second advantage of this is uh, pot cultivation is that uh, the pot gets ready in 3 to 3.5 months for the sale so in one year the farmers can take three cycles in the same greenhouses so automatically the cost benefit ratio increases so these are the different types of the uh, jarberas then what are the uh, greenhouse specification or these are specific for all the floriculture crops uh, what are the greenhouse specification first is the length of the greenhouse it should be the north south why it, it should be north south to get the maximum benefit from all the sides of the uh, greenhouses then height of the uh, greenhouse should be 6 meter and the better height should be around the 4 meter this height help us to get the uh, uh, effect of the best ventilation then the vent opening of the greenhouses it should be along the wind direction so 
uh, why it should be along the wind direction because if it is adverse the wind direction then in case of the storm or any natural calamities the storm can enter inside the greenhouse and it will collapse the greenhouse so vent opening should be along the wind direction then rolling if the greenhouse should have rolling side curtains on all the four sides to maintain the ventilation temperature inside the greenhouses then the polythene which is used to cover the greenhouses it should be around 200 microns and it should be heat stabilized then top shade net there are different top shade nets are available in the market 30% 50% 70% depending upon the light intensity of the crops grown as per the area different types of the uh, shade nets are using for example in the uh, areas having the high light intensities 70% shade nets are using while in low intensity 30 Global climate of that area. Then the bottom map should be around the one feet out of the bed. It helps in getting the better air circulation and ventilation for the crop, and it also provides the better microclimate inside the greenhouse. Then drip irrigation and the fertigation system. These are uh, the basic for all the floriculture crops and the fogging system. This is also used to control the inside microclimate. Then soil and water quality standards for all the floriculture crops. Uh, we can say this is the basic for all the floriculture crops because all these floriculture crops are very sensitive for the pH and AC values. So before start, uh, we recommend that. If you want to start any floriculture project, first you have to go for the testing of the soil and water. If that values are within range, for example, the pH should be between the five point five to seven point five, and the AC should be AC of the water should be less than one. Why? If these values are within range, then uh, we say that you can go ahead for the the floriculture crops. If these values are not within range. then what we recommend we would recommend for the detail analysis of the water so due to the detail analysis we can come to know by which factor these values are more or beyond the permissible limits so from these values we can decide whether we have to go for the aro units or softeners so that you can use this water for the floriculture project so this is the basic parameter of the floriculture project the quality of the water then same with the soil quality This is also most important for all the floriculture crops. The pH of the soil should be in between the five point five to six point five. Why it is so? Because if you observe this chart for the crops, for the, uh, the uh, development of the crop, sixteen elements are required for the development of the crop. So these, if you see this band in the pH range five point five to six point five, all the major and minor. nutrients are easily become easily available for the plants plants can easily absorb these nutrients in this ph range so the ph range should be between 5.5 to 6.5 if the plants are not if the soil is not in this range then what then we have to uh, do some reclamation uh, processes there are different chemicals which can be used to reclaim these soils It means if the soils are acidic then we can use the different chemicals like dolomite it is a calcium magnesium carbonate or potassium hydroxide but these all soil reclamation processes these are very tedious we have to give one month prior all these reclamation processes again we have to go for the analysis and then we recommend to go ahead for the any floriculture projects then gerbera can be grown in soil as well as in substrate cultivation so why what are the current issue there are some, some current issues in the soil cultivation so what are these issues mainly first issue is the non availability of the good quality soil now you all of you know that day by day the soil salinity is increasing we have the problems with the high or low ph for example the soils in the north india they are having the high ph problem why the soils in the high rainfall area they have the low ph problems then there are some soil airborne diseases that uh, in the plant protection so so these are also the cost of the soil it is getting increasing day by day nowadays government also charging some royalty on the soil cost so the cost of the soil is also increasing day by day 
and third is the soil reclamation processes that i have already explained they are the time consuming and it also increases the cost of production so um, now nowadays many farmers are switching towards the soilless cultivation or coco peat cultivation so why we have to go for the coco peat what are the advantage of the coco peat cultivation first is the precise fertigation in coco peat cultivation we can give the fertigation as per the requirement as per the standards of the crops then this coco peat is slowly decomposing and this uh, in the uh, this coco uh, when we uh, grow the crops in the coco peat then it reduces the transmission of the diseases because in coco peat cultivation each crop is planted in different pots so it reduces the transmission of the soil borne diseases from one plant to another that's why our plant protection uh, space or plant protection cost can be reduced to some extent then working posture of the workers we can adjust the height of the pitch uh, as per the workers height so that it keeps ultimately the high uh, optimum uh, high output from the same levels we can get the high output in precise irrigation i have already explained in crop protection these sprays crop protection sprays also become very easy it is because all the plants are handy so this plant protection sprays can cover all the crop the time so it it can be give the best results in crop protection also then clean the working environment there is no weeds this is one of the benefits so that we can also avoid many diseases pest Uh, which uh, many birds uh, are acting uh, as an alternate host for many diseases and pests. So due to this coco peat cultivation, we can avoid such diseases. And the main is the more planting density as compared to the soil. For example, in soil cultivation, uh, see uh, the uh, planting density is six plants per square meter. While in coco peat, it, it is eight plants per square meter. So in the same area, due to the higher planting density, we can uh, get the maximum output from the same area. So this is in short about the economics of the soil versus uh, coco peat cultivation. So if you see these prices in uh, uh, in soil cultivation, uh, the initial this is the economics for the thousand square meter area. So if you see the cost in uh, in soil cultivation, initial cost. Increases by the forty percent. Here you can see in soil cultivation it's around seven lakh eighty thousand. While in coco peat it is eleven lakh sixty south sixty thousand. So initially this cost is increases by forty percent. But if you see the turnover here after three years, the life cycle of the gerbera is around three years. So after three years, if you see the output, it is increases by the thirty three percent as compared to the soil cultivation so this is the main benefit of the coco peat cultivation and second is the replantation cost in coco peat cultivation benches and pots are the fix in re in replantation you have to change only the media in coco peat you have to change while in the soil cultivation in every replantation you have to change the media soil you have to add the fym diceus so these cost are increasing so if you compare this replantation cost so in the soil cultivation it is high coco peat cultivation then what are the climatic requirement for the gerbera cultivation temperature optimum temperature range for the gerbera is uh, from 18 to 27 degrees celsius during flowering uh, the temperature the night temperature should be between 12 to 18 degrees celsius and the day temperature should be between 22 to 27 degrees celsius if the temperature falls below 12 degrees celsius then the bud initiation stops and if it is higher below above the 35 degrees celsius then it causes the bud abortion so the optimum temperature range for the gerbera cultivation is from 18 to 27 degrees celsius the humidity range is around 65 to 70 percent we have to maintain this humidity throughout the life of the plant and the light intensity is 35 to 40000 lux if the light intensity is more then the different problems like the scorching of the leaves or short stem leaves these problems can happen so we have to maintain each climatic factors so how we can achieve these uh, you can say microclimate or how to 
manage these climatic conditions. So there are, there are different guidelines, working guidelines. Day to day, you have to uh, operate your guideline, uh, greenhouse as per the guidelines. For example, side curtains. These side curtains, they are uh, mainly helps to uh, maintain the temperature inside the greenhouses. For example, in summer, or in rainy season, so you have to open early in the morning and you have to close late in the evening. Now in winter, you have to do reverse because uh, in winter, uh, morning temperature is less and if you uh, open the side curtains early in the morning, then it can, crops can have the cold damage. So if, if you, you have to open late in the morning, while you have to close the side curtains early in the evening. Because whatever the heat inside, that can be trapped inside the greenhouse only. And if in the if there is heavy rainfall, then you have to close all the side curtains. And once the rain is over, you have to open this. We can maintain the temperature by operating the side curtains. Then top shade net opening and closing. This is also the same. In, uh, this is reverse, you can say. In cloudy climate, you have to keep open the upper, upper top shed net to uh, get the maximum benefit of the light available. And in the cold nights also you have to close the top, top shed net to trap the heat inside. And in summers you have to close the top shed nets from early in the morning to late in the evening to protect the crop from the uh, sunlight. Then some other working guidelines are that you have to wash the uh, top of the greenhouse monthly or you have to do all your plant protection sprays or fertigation early in the morning. Why you have to uh, give this early in the morning because so that all the sprays and fertigation is effectively utilized by the plants. Then what are the uh, bed material composition? The bed material comp composition of the bed should be such that the bed should be porous, it should have the well drainage and the better aeration for the growth of the Roots. So, uh, red soil, FYM and rice husk, these are uh, combined to make the beds. In clay type of the soils, uh, we have to add more uh, farm and manure, FYM, because it helps to improve the texture of the soil. And rice husk, this we are adding to for the proper drainage and to maintain the porosity inside the mineral. So, in clay type of the soils, we have to use at the rate 4 kg per meter square. By rice husk at the rate 2.5 kg per meter square. So tentative for 1000 square meter red soil 100 brass it is required. Uh, brass means uh, 100 cubic feet is 1 brass. So as per this uh, red soil we require around 100 brass. Then FOM we require around 30 brass and rice husk around 2 to 4 tons. Then after this we, we have to collect this uh, bed material and we have to mix it properly with the rotavator or leather. First we have to give red soil layer, then, up, then second layer is of the FIM, third is of the rices. Then we have to mix this bed material with the rotavator and then we have to add the neem cake or furadon granules. This we are adding for the prevention of the nematodes. Again we have to mix uniformly with the rotavator and then we are uh, giving the water to the Beds. So these are the bed dimensions in Jarbera. Jarbera are grown on the raised beds because uh, why we are using the raised beds? Because Jarbera's roots uh, can grow as deep as uh, 30 to 40 centimeter in the soil. So we have to keep 25 centimeter height. Then the length of the bed is around 70 centimeter and pathway is the 30 centimeter. These are the different stages of the bed preparation bed material collection, mixing and making of the pairs. So after this, the irrigation system. For Jarvera's drip irrigation system is used. The standard recommendations are uh, for the dripper discharge should be around 1.3 LP and the distance between the two drippers uh, should be around 30 cm. Then after this, we have to add the basal dose uh, for the Jarvera. Basal dose uh, after bed preparation, we have to add the basal dose. So in this single super phosphate magnesium. So what are the nutrients that are required for the initial development of the crop that we are adding to this basal dose? So again, we have to add this basal dose in the beds. Again, we have to wait in the beds. And again, we have to check the EC. Because after adding the basal dose, the EC of the uh, that media is increasing. So again, we have to lower that EC 
by giving the showering or milk. Then after this, the soil disinfection. This is the most important to avoid uh, practice in the floriculture cultivation to avoid the many uh, soil borne diseases like the Phytophthora or Pythia. We can avoid these diseases through the proper soil disinfection. So there are different methods of the sterilization or disinfection like the steam sterilization or sun st uh, sterilization. But Indian, uh, in Indian climate, these are very tedious methods we cannot use. So we are going for the chemical uh, disinfection of the media. For the different chemicals are used like formalin, methyl bromide, bessamine or hydrogen peroxide. So we have carried out extensive trials in our uh, company, in Care Bioplants Company. So from these trials, we recommend to use the hydrogen peroxide chemical. Why? Because uh, this methyl bromide is now banned formalin. When we go for these chemicals like formalin or methyl bromide or gasamine, we have to wait for the seven days. We have after application, we have to wait for seven days. Then again, we have to leach out these chemicals proper, uh, properly. Otherwise, it will show phytotoxic effect on the plants. So we are recommending the hydrogen peroxide chemical. Why? Because this is the uh, eco-friendly chemical. It has the oxidizing properties. So the DNA of that paste or this is that gets destroyed in the fumigation, and we get the long-term control for the uh, many diseases and pests. So this uh, this this is the silver-based hydrogen peroxide, which is very effective and economical, eco-friendly. You can say this chemical. After this, the hardened plants. What are the criteria for the quality plants? Uh, in Jarbera Hadon plants, it should have the five to six uh, healthy leaves, profuse or strong roots, vigorous growing tip. It, the planting material should be the free from the pest and diseases, and the height should be around eight to ten centimeter. So these are the planting parameters like uh, road to road distance. We have to maintain thirty seven point five. We are uh, we are doing the double row planting. Uh, plant to plant distance is 30 cm and road to road distance is 37.5 cm. Uh, gross plant population of Jarbera is 6 plants per square meter. Then for the uh, coco pit media, these are the specification. Uh, for the 9 inches, bottom should be 8 inches and height of the pot should be 7 inches. For one pot around 5 liters of coco pit media, it is required. Then these are the specification of the benches that we are using for the planting. Then this is the uh, planting method. We have to fill the pot with the cocoa pit. Then we have to uh, plant in such a way that 25% of the uh, planting plant should be uh, plug should be above the media. Why is it so? Because the cherbera is uh, as the plant grows, the root uh, the plant can be. Uh, grown in the soil. So may, there are the chances of the different diseases like the crown rot or root rot. That's why we have to keep the 25% uh, plug above the media. So this is the picture of the, showing the soilless cultivation. Then after this we have to follow the first for first 21 days. Uh, we are not giving any chemicals because already we have we are adding the basal dose. Only we are giving some uh, chemicals which are uh, useful for the initial establishment of the crop for some insecticides to prevent some insect and diseases. So first for, for 21 days we have to follow this schedule including the plant nutrients uh, for the root uh, chemicals for the proper root growth so that the plant can get established earlier. Then after this uh, these are the different uh, fertilization schedules for first uh, two to 2.5 months we have to give the vegetative stage fertigation. Once the plants are attained the proper vegetative stage means uh, 16 to 18 weeks then we can go for the flowering stage fertigation. So these are the details of the fertigation. All these details are available on our website so I am we have to cover the two crops so I am going fast. So we have to give the uh, fertigation in two stages vegetative stage and the flowering stage. In the, throughout the life of the plant, we have to maintain 1.5 to 1.7 micro siemens per centimeter EC. EC should, of the fertigation should be between the 1.5 to 1.7. And the tentative uh, water requirement 
per plant is 300 to 700 ml it's depending upon the season then pest and disease management uh, so we have to use the combination of the different pest management practices like the cultural biological physical chemical and uh, also we have to use some cultural controls also so that we can reduce the cost of production so these are the different techniques that we can use to control the pest and diseases effectively first is the crop monitoring day to day you have to monitor your crop for so that we can detect if any diseases or pest in early stage only so crop monitoring is very essential then cultural control means to provide the suitable conditions for the growth of the crop it includes the different operations like the weeding raking tilling etc so that we can provide the suitable conditions for the proper growth and development of the crop then use of the resistant varieties in jarbera almost we have more than 150 varieties so as per the climate as per the region these varieties are varying so we have to use the varieties which are suitable to your area then the biological control biological control in this we can use many predators or parasites to control the pest population and our last option should be to the chemical control so these are the different pest and this is strategies to prevent this for preventing the attack if we uh, if we manage the crops if we are proactive and if we uh, prevent the crop prevent the crop from any pest or disease attack then we can uh, save the many uh, plant protection sprays we can reduce the cost of production so what are the preventive measures first is the use of the sticky traps different sticky traps like the yellow or uh, blue sticky traps they are used uh, in the crops for all the second pest these crop mainly these uh, traps are used uh the blue sticky traps are mainly used for control of the thrips and for all other sucking pests yellow sticky traps are used so we have to use these sticky traps in combination in the greenhouse then the pheromone traps to control the different caterpillars we can use the pheromone traps and light traps in the night time the plant uh, insects are getting attracted towards the light and we can effectively um, effectively control the insects through this light trap also then what are the cares that should be taken before the spraying of any pesticide or fungicides we say that we are taking many sprays but the pest population cannot be controlled so why there are many parameters that should be considered before taking any spray for example if we are taking the spray for the mites then the ph of the solution should be acidic while if we are taking spray for control of the powdery mildew then the spray solution should be alkaline nature so these are some the techniques or tricks which tricks which we can use in day to day operations the farmer should know these all the techniques to reduce the cost of production then these are some chemicals which should be avoided in the jarbera they are causing some phytotoxic effect like this par contact fluidomil topaz so these are uh, these chemicals should be avoided in jarbera then these are the major insect pests of the jarbera white fly thrips sleep miner red mites cyclamen mites caterpillar root rot nematode and aphids these are the major insect pests mm-hmm. i will not go in deep in the life cycle of this uh, pest but farmer should know the life cycle of the pest for example if uh, white fly incidence is there white fly lay the eggs on the underside of the leaves so while if you have to control the white flies in your field then you have to take the spray on underside of the leaves also so these are some so farmer should know on these details before taking any spray or to manage the pest and disease effectively so these are the symptoms of the white fly generally in hot and uh, uh, in high temperature sorry in hot climate uh, these white fly attack is seen these are the symptoms of the white flies then second is thrips this also is seen in the summers in when there is a high temperatures these are the typical symptoms of the thrips then leaf miner in cloudy climate mainly this uh, pest is there these are the symptoms of the leaf miner then red mites this also comes in the summer season when temperature when the climate is hot and dry 
So these are the typical symptoms of the red mites. Then cyclamen mites. When humidity inside the greenhouse is on the higher side, then these pests affect the crop. Caterpillar. This also comes in the cloudy climate. These are the symptoms of the caterpillars. Then root knot nematodes. This effect on the roots of the gerberas. So you can see such. Are you having any effect? इंपॉर्टेंट
then from these we are selecting some varieties which are giving the outstanding performance then these selected varieties we are giving for the multi location trial all over the india and we are studying its uh, parameters its output its uh, growing hab growing habits for next one year and from this every year we are selecting the new varieties so we are trying to give new varieties every year to the market so this is all about the jargara then uh, we are going to see the next crop it's dendrobium this is the orchids family if we see the uh, scenario of this crop so in india around uh, 125 acre area is in under this uh, dendrobium and the market demand for the dendrobium is for the 500 acres so uh, in india we are importing 70% flowers of the dendrobium so there is a huge potential for this orchids so that's why many farmers are switching towards this orchids this dendrobium species actually these orchids are epiphytic in nature means it needs support for its growth these are the climatic parameters for the dendrobium cultivation temperature it should be between 20 to 35 degrees celsius relative humidity should be between 60 to 70 percent and the light intensity should be between 25 to 30000 lux so these are some polio specification for the growth of the dendrobium additionally we have to uh, fix one shade net on the top of the plastic to reduce the light intensity other parameters are same like the jerberas so like this overhead shade net we have to put this additional shade net on the greenhouse to cut the light intensity and also in the areas having the high temperatures the overhead sprinklers are used to maintain the ventilation inside the greenhouse this is the structure rolling side curtains can be put all over around the green in uh, house then for the benches uh, different type of the stands are used like the cement pole based stands or the gi pole based stands actually gi pole based stands are best because that can we can fabricate as per our requirement and they are also easy to modify and the netted platform which we are using for the this netted platform this can be best used in the gi type of the uh, platform so these are the bench dimensions uh, for the dendrobium crop the length of the bed should be around 120 cm the height should be uh, the 70 cm and the pathway between the two beds is around 80 cm then to maintain the humidity so the misters are put beneath the benches and also the sprinklers are used for controlling the humidity then media for the uh, dendrobium cultivation mainly coco shells are used these coco shells uh, so this is the process of coco shells mainly these coco shells they are coming from the coastal areas so the sodium content is more initially so we have to give some pre plantation treatment to these uh, coco shells like first we have to give the calcium nitrate treatment so that we have to dip this uh, coco shells in the calcium nitrate for overnight then again we have to check the easy levels and then we should go ahead for the plantation then this is the uh, arrangement of the husk on the beds it should be arranged back to back position this is the planting uh, method of the dendrobium the plant to plant distance is 15 cm while the row to row distance is 20 cm if if we uh, the planting density of the dendrobium is 10 plants per meter so, so in that around plants then all the irrigation practices that we are giving through shower only uh, to this dendrobium crop so this is the basic requirement it is fertigation we can give twice or thrice in a week so this is very easy to maintain if we consider the labor so for example for jaguar if you require the three plants labor for one acre then in dendrobium one pair is sufficient so this in less man power also we can manage this crop then these are the some fertigation techniques uh, of the dendrobium we have to give as per the stage of the crop fertigation as per the stage of the crop this is the aerial root system of the dendrobium crop the roots are aerial this is the photograph of the production stage dendrobiums then harvesting 
these uh, plants are harvested uh, when uh, the length is around 60 cm and the plant should have 10 to 12 florets each so the plant, this stem is cut from here so this is the point of harvest then packing around 20 flowers are packed in one bunch and they are uh, sent for the market if we see the production of the dendrobium in first the wetting period uh, is more in the dendrobium you can say for the first seven months after seven months the production starts so first initial wetting period is more but if you see the life cycle it's around seven years so this is the long term crop you can say in first year you get only two spikes or two stems in first year in second year you get up to five to seven spikes per plant per year while third year third year onwards you can get eight to ten spikes per plant per year and if you see the economics of this mainly if you consider all this cost means recurring cost like the fertilizers pesticides around per flower uh, the recurring cost is production cost is around 2.5 to 3 rupees and if you see the selling price dendrobium it, it is not sell less than 10 rupees per flower so the cost benefit ratio uh, is uh, we can say more as compared to the other floricultural crops in the dendrobium then these are the different pests um, in the dendrobium like snails thrips mealybugs red mites aphids white black caterpillar mainly the snails are more in the green uh, because due to the humidity and due to the cocoa shells these snails also more in the uh, dendrobium crop then these are the different diseases of the dendrobium like bacterial leaf spot soft rot black rot fusarium color rot i will not go deep in these diseases this is the main uh, problem in the you can say in the dendrobium bacterial leaf spots